Hey y'all, Phyllis here. My website is southernfrugal.com. I wanted to do uh, this video and just sort of talk to you a minute before we get started. Um, and I was a single parent and uh, I worked full time and I had a two year old and a four year old. And I can tell you it was very, very hard. And um, the hardest part was having to come up with something for supper and uh, not getting home until uh, 5.30. I've got to put the dogs out, y'all. Hold on. All right, I'm back. Uh, they have this little game where they run around the table here in the kitchen, and then finally they start barking at each other, so I knew that was getting ready to happen. Anyway, back to my little story. So I got home at 5.30. So it was a real struggle to get supper ready and to be able to spend time with my children. And so um, finally I started cooking stuff ahead. Uh, not really cooking it ahead, but I, like for instance chicken. I had um, this recipe for chicken where you had it, you dipped it in a batter and I would have it frozen. And I would put it in the oven and then have the timer on. I could do roast that way, all kinds of things if I put them in the oven frozen. Now uh, we left to, for me to get to work and get them to daycare at a little before 8 o'clock and uh, I didn't have to be at work until 8.30 which was a real blessing, it really was. So anyway, uh, I wanted to do some recipes uh, in having in mind those who work because it is very hard to come home and fix a meal and it's no wonder people eat out so much now because you're just tired and so so what you have to do instead of just working harder is work a lot smarter. So the other day we had some beef stew. I did the video on it and fixed it in the Instant Pot. And by the way, if you don't have an Instant Pot and you're a working couple, you need to get an Instant Pot. It's going to save you a lot, lot of time. And um, so anyway, what I've done is I have picked out the beef and the carrots and some of the celery and I, I left the gravy and the potatoes and then I cut the beef up into little smaller pieces so we're going to take that beef and the carrots and the uh, there is a little bit of gravy there with it and what we're going to do is add about three-fourths of a cup of cooked rice to that Uh-oh, sorry, I don't I hit that tripod all the time. Sorry, y'all. All right, so we're just going to mix that up, get that rice incorporated in with the meat and a little bit of that gravy. Now, that uh, pot roast is really what it was. The beef stew was enough for uh, to serve four people, and, of course, there's only two of us, so obviously we were going to have some leftovers. All right, so we've got that rice. Now that was a uh, three-fourths of a cup of cooked rice, and that's about eight ounces of beef in there. There's a little bit of gravy, some of the onions, and some of the celery from that uh, beef stew that I fixed a couple of days ago. So I've got some parsley. Now I've got, uh, this is uh, fresh parsley that I have out in a flower pot outside and as soon as it gets really warm that parsley is going to just dry up and go away or go to seed is what it will do first so I want to use some of that and what the parsley will do is give it a little bit of a fresh taste just rolling that up and then just cut it with my scissors also this uh, fresh parsley sort of reminds me of uh, celery. All right, now we're just going to mix that in with this beef and the uh, rice. And we're, th this is not going to be a casserole, y'all. It's going to be something else. You probably have guessed what it's going to be from the title. All 
right, so this is going to be our filling for a little pie we're going to make. And this is certainly going to be enough to serve two people for sure. So what we've got here is a Pillsbury pie crust. Now I know that I don't uh, use these very often, but I'm using them because I want to show y'all how easy this is. You don't have to make your own pie crust here. Now I've had it out of the refrigerator for about 30 minutes which is what the directions say you should do and get it sort of at, somewhat at room temperature. All right, this is going to be our filling. So now this is the only uh, old pie pan I have left and I'm so glad I saved one because it's one of those cheapo pans that's real thin and so it browns really well on the bottom. Let me move y'all back just a little bit there. All right, so I'm going to roll out this pie crust, or unroll it, right onto the pan. Now, you can make this kind of pie with chicken, with pork, all kinds of stuff. And it makes a great meal. Now, I do love the taste of these pie crust. I used to uh, like the uh, beef pot pies. And the part I liked best about them was the crust. I didn't like the filling very much at all, but this filling is going to be good. So we're just going to go ahead, and by the way, I've got this greased with a little bit of Crisco, because obviously I don't want it to stick. So we're going to put that pie crust down like that. And by the way, I have to cut my fingernails, because when I make this, if I don't watch it, my fingernails will stick a hole in it, and you don't want a hole in it. So we're going to put this filling right on half of this crust. And I'm going to tell y'all this is really, really good. It works really well with chicken. It works with pork. I've never tried it with fish, but it definitely works with chicken, pork, and beef. So I put the rice in there and took the potatoes out and most of the gravy because it needs to be somewhat dry. Otherwise, it's going to kind of come apart in the oven. So we're going to make this kind of in the shape of a half moon kind of thing. You want to leave an edge around there. Well, let me get this so y'all can see better. You want to leave a good inch or so edge around there. And so what we're going to do now is fold this over. We want to make sure we can get it over far enough, so I need to move that back a little bit, like that. There we go, and fold it over. Now this is where I, if I've got fingernails, I end up sticking the crust, so I've got my fingernail short, so we're just going to mash that down. Kind of seal those two sides together. And again, being careful to not pierce the crust here around the bottom. All right, then we're going to just roll it over because we want to make absolutely sure it's sealed up here at the bottom. We don't want any filling running out. So we're just going to roll that over. Now, uh, some of you uh, guys can definitely make this be a good surprise if your wife came home and you had already made supper. Of course, I know a lot of you guys cook, but I don't think that many men cook. Not if they got a wife who will do the cooking. I don't know, I might have got myself in trouble saying that. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to take a fork now and get it good and mashed together. I'm going to put a little flour on this paper towel. So it doesn't, uh, so it will come out of the 
little thing easier like that. Each time dipping that fork into the flour. Just make sure your fork doesn't pierce this top part of the crust. Yeah, when you work and you've got young children, it is really hard to uh, come up with meals. And I, mean, I know um, a lot of people just go out to eat. Again, the oven has been preheating at 425 degrees, and this is going to end up cooking in the oven 25 to 30 minutes. So what we want to do is make some air vents like that. I'm just using the back side of that fork. You want to make right many because there's going to be steam in there. And again, make sure it's completely sealed all around the edge. And uh, so we're going to let it cook again for about 25 to 30 minutes at 425 degrees. Make sure you preheat your oven, okay? All right, we'll be back in just a minute. All right, we are back, and I want to talk a little bit more about um, when you work. It is, it's very hard. And of course, this is why the restaurant industry is doing such a, a lot of business now is because so many women work, and of course men work too. And um, we certainly do have men who cook now. And uh, Mr. Bucky can cook, but he doesn't do it very often. But when I worked, sometimes he did. So uh, anyway, we want to do some things that are uh, easier for those who work, things that are quicker, and of course, using the Instant Pot is one answer to that. Another is uh, figuring out how to cook things in the oven by preparing them and putting them in the oven frozen in the morning. Put your timer on. Now, there's nothing better than that. When you're working, you've had a hard day, you get home, it's 5.30. When you open the door, you can smell whatever you're cooking is done and ready. It's great. So anyway, we'll see y'all in a few minutes. It's going to be about 30 before that uh, a little pie is done. We'll be back. All right, here's the, uh, we'll just call it beef stew pie. Yeah, that's a good name for it. Now I'm going to let it cool here maybe five or six minutes and then I'm going to cut it right in half and half of it is on my plate and half on Mr. Bucky's. All right, we'll be back and show you what it looks like on the plate in just a minute. All right, here's the pie. Let me give you a close-up of what it looks like, and the crust is very crispy. Now, you don't want to paint this crust with any butter or egg wash or anything like that because it will definitely crack. It cracks a little bit anyway, and also you want to make sure you don't stretch the crust. And we're having that with uh, organic baby greens in the salad and cubed cucumbers. Uh, I've chopped those in the Vidalia Chop Wizard and those little peas are frozen peas. I boil them for about two minutes and then I immediately cool them and we put them on salads. They're really good and crunchy that way. And there's some of the uh, jello, uh, jello and pear and uh, miniature marshmallows. That'll be our dessert and of course we've got our iced tea. All right, y'all, here's the other one. You can see some of the rice in there. It smells really, really good. So this is a way to have leftovers that don't seem like leftovers on the beef and the uh, carrots and the celery and onion are in there along with the rice. All right, y'all. All right, I had a comment, I think yesterday or day before yesterday about uh, they felt sorry for Mr. Bucky because he always had to eat cold food because I was recording. Well, I can assure you the food that he eats is not cold because I record and we immediately eat. All right, y'all, we'll see y'all next time. Bye for now.